it is a cookbook, but it's kind of also not. I, you know, you can say, well, it's a, a book that travels, takes you traveling in Burma, to and in Burma, um, through food. But to talk about food, we have to talk about history and place and geography and travel ideas and the human beings who live there on an individual basis. And, you know, and then, yeah, and then, then maybe we're ready to look at some recipes, you know. What you need to do is retool your notion of what a cookbook is. There's no such thing as just a cookbook. In other words, we can use food as an entry point into culture, and what better one, because we all have to eat. And in the course of exploring culture through food, we get to find out about many, many other things. And so that's sort of what the book does. And then, then the other trick, of course, is, okay, so this is my interest, this is what I like doing, is to have the luck of having a publisher who's generous enough to give give the scope and not just not publish merely recipes but also all the other things that give them context you know the food um, because of its location and because of how big it is um, lots of, of, of different varieties of food um, so the closer you get to China the more kind of Chinese influences uh... not quite so clear as that but more cultural I mean there's an inherent cultural diversity see so of the central the Bemar people in the center of the country um, Burmans is another term, um, and then you have the various states which are named after the majority people in that state, the majority culture, and they're very distinct, I mean, people who speak a different language and have a different culinary culture, and then of course there's, there's been overlap and learning back and forth and so on and influences, so you have the central Burmese, and that's about 75% of the population, and then there's the uh, Shan, who are a large group, there are there are actually several sort of subgroups of them, but they call themselves Thai Yai. In other words, they're they're a Thai culture, and so and they don't use traditionally don't use fish sauce. They use salt. And they don't use dried shrimp. And they use salt and fermented soybeans. And then there's the Kachin, which is the northern lobe of the country, and they're hill people. And they're again a compass. That's an, an umbrella name for a bunch of different peoples um, who are whose food is largely s traditionally steamed and so on because they didn't have lots of oil. So you, it's efficient, uh, the most efficient way of cooking is to steam over water um, in banana leaves. Um, and there's other ways of now working with that food and keeping that sort of traditional feel but not having to have banana leaves. And there's the Chin people who are on the, in India they're known as Mizu or Mizo, and Mizoram is a state in India, in northeast India that has majority, what the Burmese would call Chin, um, what the Indians call Mizu. And those people, again, it's a composite name for a whole lot of subgroups because, you know, people lived isolated in valleys and there's different textile traditions and music traditions and, and food traditions depending on what elevation they were at. So some of the Mizu, um, their staple was millet, now it's corn, others it's rice. And, and Chin State, where those people live, um, is still close to foreigners. Um, then there's the coast, the long coastline south of Bangladesh, the Arakan coast or the Rakhine coast. It doesn't help people trying to learn the geography that the government has changed the names of everything. Anyway, the Arakan coast, which was the first part of Burma to be conquered by the British in, in 1826. Um, and that, that's quite, that's sort of like central Burmese food, but there's more heat, perhaps because they're close to Bangladesh. Um, and uh, and then in the south, some of the food in the south of Burma, the tail of the kite, they're of course close to the Thai border, and also it's getting more and more tropical. It's very coastal. I mean, it's, it's, there's not much of an interior before you hit the Thai border. And so that food is quite like some of the Thai food in, uh, in southern Thailand in Phuket. Um, and again, more chilies, and there's gallon gal and more lemongrass. And, um, not much, um, not much non-seafood that I could tell, um, but you know every generalization has its exception, right? So, and then there's the Karin. There's all sorts of other groups. I mean, it's really so culturally diverse that um, it's. It, I mean, the analogy really is India, which is layered and layered and layered with culinary and religious and you know ethnic identities. And so there's 
there's contact points where there's some cross influence, and then there's these pockets of things that are, you know, this person eats this and not that. Um, and Burma's a sort of um, smaller, um, simpler, but still very complex version of that kind of picture, you know? Um, and it hasn't, because it hasn't modernized much, they, it's not, hasn't been hom homogenized much. So there's, you can still find, if you have eyes to see, and I don't necessarily, I'm just saying a person who knew, you could find these distinct pockets still self-identifying as this subset of Shan person or that subset of Chin person with, you know, a distinctive, yeah, textile and food and everything else, culture. It's really a really complicated picture, and I've just, I've just scratched the surface, you know, really amazing. I think the uh, Burma Tourism Office Ministry should should uh, really sign you up because, you know, there's been a lot of scary stuff about Burma over the years, and this yeah. is like the opposite of that. It's such an optimistic, beautiful, and delicious book. Good, good job. Thanks so much. The book is Burma Rivers of Flavor. I've been speaking with the author Naomi Duguid and Burma Rivers of Flavor, published by Random House of Canada.